with uh, a physical and cultural crossroads means that it has always been uh, an ex a corridor for exchange in goods, in uh, knowledge, and in wisdom. Today, Greece has excellent relations with all countries in the Middle East, the Gulf countries, and is uh, uniquely placed as a connector between the Mediterranean Sea and the Indo-Pacific. It presents so much opportunity for both our countries. We are already a well-established logistics center, an international gateway, but we want to increase connectivity and promote trade still further. Piraeus is one of the busiest ports in Europe. More of our ports are in the process of being privatized. Greek ship owners, something which is absolutely critical also for India, control the largest merchant marine fleet in the world. And beyond the flow of goods, we are pursuing new corridors for data and energy. And the emergence of ground-breaking projects like IMEC, India, Middle East, Europe corridor, hold great promise to supercharge connectivity between India and the growth economies of the Middle East and Europe. One has just to look at the map to realize that Greece is sitting right in the center of this new corridor. And to our friends in India, I say, we are your natural doorstep to Europe and beyond. And the war in Gaza and the turmoil in the Middle East is undoubtedly destabilizing. But, but it does not undermine the profound, the powerful logic behind IMEC. Nor should it weaken our resolve to work tirelessly towards materializing it. Instead, I would argue it gives us even more reasons uh, to promote peace, given that IMEC at its heart is also a peace project, which can bring about stability and prosperity for all participating countries, countries which are at war don't trade with each other. The Indo-Pacific region is a major focus for the European Union's global policy. And earlier this month, in Brussels, at the third EU Indo-Pacific Ministerial Forum, we took a series of measures aimed at intensifying the partnership between the European Union and the countries of the Indo-Pacific. Our two regions are increasingly connected because we face the same challenges, but we also share the same interests, promoting peace, prosperity, stability, and of course, climate and environmental resilience. Dear Prime Minister, dear friends, recognizing the strategic importance of the role India plays in this evolving new order is fundamental. And the relationship between India and Greece, as we had an opportunity to reconfirm in our very fruitful bilateral discussions today, is one uh, based on respect, on friendship, on values, but also on the mutual will to see our people progress and prosper. And while obviously not all challenges are the same, the way we meet these challenges often is. The scale may be vastly different, but I see a lot of similarities in the way our two countries have implemented an ambitious reform agenda. Both India and Greece have pursued sustainable uh, growth and prosperity through innovation and bold changes. We have both um, encouraged and embraced the digital revolution. We have leveraged, you have done this here in India, at an unprecedented scale, uh, leveraging technology to transform the delivery of public services for the benefit of all citizens. And we have both demonstrated that the power of innovative and bold reforms that bring growth, spread opportunity, deliver prosperity, and create the higher paying jobs of the future, this is the path to go. And I believe that my country's, Greece's recent story of rapid change matters also to a country like India, and by extension to what that change means for Indian investment in Greece and the European Union. 
The country I was called upon to govern when first elected to office in 2019 was seen by many analysts at the time as the sick man of Europe. Between 2015 and 2019, populism had promised much, delivered nothing, and left Greece teetering on the edge. An effective policymaking has changed that, and it has transformed Greece's prospects. First, growth-oriented policies, but always, always underpinned by fiscal responsibility. Second, a robust approach to migration and security, supported by an assertive foreign policy and the shaping of new regional partnerships, like the one between Greece and India. And third, investing in health, in education, and using any fiscal headroom generated by a growing economy to tackle social inequality. And by cutting taxes, supporting entrepreneurs, spurring investments through market reforms, much like India has done, Greece has seen over the past years one of the highest growth rates in the Eurozone. And we have witnessed the fastest, the fastest reduction of debt to GDP ratio of any European country. Credit ratings have uh, returned, credit rating agencies have returned Greek debt to investment. Great, and The Economist voted as country of the year for 2023. All of which has led to falling unemployment, higher wages, record foreign investment, and a rapid shift towards the green and digital economies of the future, and of course a new, more assertive Greece at the heart of Europe. And today, I am proud to be able to talk to you about a very different Greece to the country that many had written off as unreformable a few years ago. And the confident Greece of today not only wants to be an integral part of region-to-region -region partnerships, but also knows it can be the new gateway to Europe for India's businesses, its entrepreneurs, its wealth creators. This is why six months ago we elevated our strategic ties through the India-Greece Strategic Partnership. India is the world's fastest big economy. Greece has over the past years enjoyed some of the fastest growth rates of any European country. Mutual investment is a major goal of our bilateral relations. And I'm pleased to say that we already have a number of uh, significant Greek investments here in India in many sectors, including food processing, led by one of our leading companies, Chipita, and infrastructure, maritime and air transport, logistics. One of our leading banks, Eurobank, is establishing its first office in India. But India, India is already investing heavily in Greece's infrastructure. Uh, including the construction of uh, the new airport by GMR on my home island of Crete. Indian-owned Swiss Group has invested in a number of uh, Greek agri-food businesses, and Accord, the European subsidiary of Intas Pharmaceuticals, has recently invested in a factory close to Athens. The volume of our bilateral trade is on an upward trend, but we have agreed with Prime Minister Modi that we need to do much more and we need to set a target to double it by 2030. It has great potential for future growth. In tourism, in tourism we have on, only scrapped the surface of what we can do together as a new emerging Indian middle class will start to travel and discover the world. What better natural destination than Greece given the cultural affinities between our two people? So I do believe that we can do much more, which is why the business delegation, the business leaders who have accompanied me to Greece include nearly 100 leaders of some of Greece's biggest companies, but also for some of its most dynamic and fastest growing small and medium sized enterprises. And from Delhi, I will be traveling tomorrow to Mumbai and my delegation will continue to Bangalore with a simple message. Greece is growing like never before, and uh, to Indian businesses, we say, please join us on that journey. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I touched a little earlier on the growing importance of the role of India on the international stage.